Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so we've already started recording. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for thanks for that information, Deborah. Um so we can just get started. Today we will be talking about decision making frameworks. Um, I know in both our professional careers and also in our personal life, uh, if not every single day, every time we are faced with certain challenges or situations that make us or forces us to make decisions. And it can be a tricky situation. Uh, and sometimes it can be hard for you to know how to better um, decide on which path to follow. Uh, but we're hoping today's tutorial will kind of give you a framework that can help you in future decide on, uh, yeah, make proper decisions. So for today, we're going to look at the, so we're going to just see, uh, just have a small introduction on decision making, and then we're going to talk about um, rationalism and universal emotion, which is basically how, um, what influences us to make decisions. And then we're going to look at the different frameworks too. So we have the Judge Bezos framework and also the regret minimization frameworks. And we're also going to talk about the different types of decisions and tips for you to make better decisions. So I hope this will be fun for you and I hope it's going to help you the next time you're faced with a strong decision to make, um, make better decisions. Okay. So when we talk about decision making, I know you all know what decision making is. So it's basically a cognitive process. When we talk about cognitive, uh, something that the brain has to make, uh, has to make a choice, especially when you're faced with dynamics or problems. So you have to pick a decision and sometimes it's not easy. Uh, and as much as you read the pros and cons of each side, Sometimes you can get uh, what we call an analysis paralysis, which is when you're not able to make perfect decisions. So you keep postponing and postponing and postponing every time and you never actually get to make, to stick to one decision. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to, yeah, so that's on decision making. Um, so when, whenever we're making decisions or whenever we're faced with, um, whenever we're faced with a challenge or, yeah, a challenge or when we find ourselves in areas where we have to make decisions, they can be sometimes made by, you can either make a decision using rationale, which is basically making a decision based on a certain reason or logic. But sometimes emotions can override logic, especially when your emotions are supercharged. They sometimes can influence you to make the not so good decisions. Um, so as we go ahead, we're going to see, even from the different frameworks, that it's really important for you to make decisions based on reason or based on logic. So if we're talking about business and you're trying to make certain decisions, one example of using reason or logic could be using data to make decisions. So not just using your intuition, um, but using making decision, making business decisions based on data. Um, so yeah, as work as proper work professionals, I think we should try and avoid um, making decisions based off of our emotions. Um, because yeah, we're humans and we get we we get feelings and emotions, and that should never override or you should never make a decision when you're in a in a, a charged emotion. So whenever you're anxious or stressed, it's that's not the right time to make a decision. So the right time to make a decision is when you are relaxed, when you're in when you're calm, when you're in a proper uh, mental state and you use reason, you have a proper reason why as to why you're making a certain decision. Um, so when we talk about rationality, so that is 
making a decision based off of reasons. You could make a decision based off. So one of the reasons could be uh, because your personal beliefs and values are attuned to a certain direction, or it could be um, for cognitive bias. And I think we have a lot of the different ways. Uh, yeah, there are different cognitive biases that we experience as humans. And that's basically just the ability of, um, yeah, it's ability of when when your brain makes a decision based on, based off of um, how we think or just the feelings that we've had or the reality that we live in. So that could be, um that your past um it, yeah it could be your past it could be um something that you're used to it could be that your brain has been tricked into making a certain decision and if we look at let me just share this part so there's a certain cortex from wikipedia that has over a hundred different types of cognitive biases that exist uh with humans yeah so it's basically making a decision just based off of what you're used to or your rationality in judgment and if you look at the codex bias yeah so if you see there are all of these are different types of cognitive biases or how our brains are wired to kind of think so if we yeah, there are very many different types of cognitive biases, so you can maybe take some time later and read through them. I'm just trying to find one that is sort of familiar. So it gives us the different types of biases that our brains experience and also gives like how exactly do you act when certain, um, when, when, when you, yeah, yeah, how to act on certain conditions of your brain. So over here we have all the different types of biases and then it's divided into uh, if you feel like your brain is attuned to this certain bias, you need to act first. And the other, the seven gray part is what you should remember before making a decision. And then there is this other part, which is too much information. And another one is not enough meaning. So okay um, i can see something familiar they're very many but i can think about one form of cognitive bias so if for example um for example in supermarkets whenever we see a certain um a certain product is discounted so you always have like those promos and discounts that are running so some that could kind of trick your brain into thinking this is a good deal let me buy it um but in real sense you might find that the price didn't actually um reduce it's just that word that has been written there promoted discounted that can trick your brain into making a decision um yeah it's it's something that is used by most marketing or retail stores that's an example of a cognitive bias um another one could be making a decision because you are used to doing something so it's for example um going to church on sunday okay for christians i'm not sure what your religion but for christians going to church every sunday it's we just normally do it every day because it's a norm it's it's a routine that we all have to go through but if you ever really think about it um why exactly do we go it's because your brain is used to that process um yeah that's that's just an example there are very many different types and i would advise you to go read more on this so if you just google cognitive bias on wikipedia you're going to see um all these details which is very interesting and in a way it really affects how we make our decisions um uh, 
Yeah. So a cognitive bias could influence your decision. And we've seen that like very many ways in which cognitive bias can influence how you make a decision. And then the other thing that could affect how you make a decision is the amount of information you have. So if you have enough information, you're going to make better decisions because you have something concrete to make your decision from. So not just if you have like less information about something, you're going to be kind of stuck in making a decision because you don't have facts to support your decision. So that could also be a factor that influence how you make a decision. And then there's also this risk and reward perception. And we as humans are always pulled towards the rewards. Some are always pulled towards risk. Some love taking risks and some love the, some would some humans would choose to do a certain thing because they know there's a reward afterwards. So um, you're applying to this thing because you know there's some money to be uh, received. That could make you make a decision. So, and for the business people who love uh, risking, that could also be um, so that you risk in order to get a proper reward. The other one is your past experiences or your norms. So if you did something in the past and it turned out in a certain, whether in a positive or negative, if it turned out in a positive way, chances of you doing the same thing again are going to be high because you, it, it, it was a positive thing in the past. So you also expect something positive. If you tried something in the past and it didn't turn out great, you the next time you'll be inclined to make a decision in the opposite way. So that could also be one of the reasons as to why you make a decision. Um, yeah, that's, that's, there are other factors that could influence how you make decisions based off of reason, but also just a few. And when we go to emotional, help making decisions from emotions, we could think about, we could think about, um, yeah, we could think about a lot of things. Um, but yeah, and like we said earlier, uh, making decisions irrationally is not, um, is not a good thing because at that time your mind is not settled, it's not calm, it's just making um, decisions based off of your moods or emotions and you always want to have yourself calm and composed. Um, so emotions, whether you're stressed or angry or overly happy, that could make you make a decision. Um, there's also cultural influence, so you could do something because your culture, it's the norm of your culture to do it. Um, yeah, and then you also have like time constraints, especially when you're running on deadlines, you tend to make like quick and rush decisions without thinking because you don't have enough time to think about it. And then uh, you could have physical factors or even just the culture and environment that could affect um, how you make a decision. Uh, okay, so we've talked about the different, so. Yeah, so we've talked about the different types of, um, or the different reasons that make people make decisions. But how exactly do you make a decision? Um, so we have different frameworks. The first one, we're going to look at the Jeff Bezos framework, which I think we all know, um, CEO of Amazon. So he created a framework on how to make decisions. And I think the reason why he chose to make this decision is because in business, you're going to be faced with a lot of hard decisions that you have to make and you have to make them quick uh, you have to make them in a short time and they all have impact. So I think we can all learn from him. Um, so he kind of summarizes decisions into two types. So we have two types of decisions. We have type one decisions and type two decisions. So type one decisions are those decisions that once you make them, they have like a very high. So if you look at this, quadrant here, I have the type one decision and then the type twos. So for type one decision, 
these are the decisions that you cannot reverse them once you make the decision there's no going back and they have consequences so an example that i love using is giving birth so if you decide to have a baby there's no way you can take back that baby and Get, having a baby has a lot of consequences. So you can think about a lot of other type one decisions, but this is just an example of one. So when you're faced with a type one decision that you have to make, um, he advises you to do a lot of research first, so you don't have to make this quick and rush. And then you explore the possible scenarios that um, that could that yeah explore the possible outcomes when you choose certain decisions and then evaluate and quantify the risk of each and every scenario that you explore and then decide rationally and remember when we say it rationally decide on reason so decide with uh, after you evaluated and quantified the risks so decide rationally and very carefully because there's no going back and you're going to have a lot of consequences. So that's on type, type one decisions. And if you see here, it says type one, you have to hit pause. So if you're making a decision that could be life-changing, you have to hit pause and think about it carefully. But then you have this other types of decisions, type two decision. These are just some small, small decisions that you have to make in a single day, like, um, should I go to the gym first or have breakfast first? Should I do this? Like small, small things. Should I wear bright red? Should I um, go have lunch with my colleagues or finish some work? Um, we're going to look at the different things, but these are just small, small decisions that you have to make. And still with this, there are three different types of decisions in type two. So we have one that is irreversible and inconsequential. So you cannot reverse them, but they don't have any consequence. Um, so with this type of decision, you have to review already available data and decide on the spot. So if you see the difference between type one, you have to make decisions first. So if you look at, uh, yeah, his, what, when he summarized it, and you can read more, this is a link that you can read more, the decision-making frameworks. So for this one, you have so in business you have to somehow make high quality high velocity decisions so he emphasizes that speed matters in business you don't want to be doing one thing for like a whole month fail fast fail fail fast fail forward or win fast win forward and move on to the next thing so uh he emphasizes that high velocity decisions are also more fun to make um, I guess this also comes with making risks, but yeah. So when it comes to business, speed matters because, um, yeah, so you can imagine someone running such a big company, you can imagine the number of problems or decisions that he faces each and every single day. And you have to make them every single day, knowing that tomorrow more decisions will come, um, you'd be at crossroads again tomorrow. So how exactly can you make yourself um attuned to making decisions um quick uh so the other type too is something that you can reverse and doesn't really have a consequence so he yeah why not just do it so decide on the spot based on experience and then set a timer set a reminder to check the outcome and if it doesn't work well since it's a reversible thing you can decide to change next time and the other one is something that has a lot of consequence, but you can still reverse it. Um, so for example, so with this, he advises you to review already available data and then understand the milestones and then when the decision can be reversed versus when it has an impact. And then you decide rationally again with reason, with logic. And if you have data, uh, decide based on data and then set a review schedule based and yeah set a review schedule based on milestones so if you ever find yourself in a certain decision just come back to this um look at it where does it fall here first second third or fourth quadrant and then do as advised so that's one of the frameworks the other framework is called the regret minimization framework which is also kind of similar to jeff Bezos, but 
it in a different way. So for this, it's basically, um, if I can just summarize your regret minimization framework, it's basically you have to, so it has like five steps. So the first one is if you're faced with a decision, uh, the first step is to project yourself and look at yourself in the next 10 years or five years. And then like, if you made, if you make, you have two decisions to make, A or B. If I make decision A, where will this land me in the next 10 years? If I make decision B, where will I be in the next 10 years? And you can think of this also in your career path. So um, this, yeah, in your career path and look at how, like in future, how is this going to be? Um, yeah, and then, you have to reflect on it, like visualize, are you going to be happy or not? And then internalize that feeling and then observe again with your older self. Are you happy with the decision that you made or not? If you're happy, go ahead with choosing decision B. Um, yeah, and then if you're not, um, choose the other, choose the other, is the other option. So the whole goal is to make sure that in the next few years, you'd be happy with the decisions that you'd made today. And once you've already made the, the, that decision, then you have to act on it. Yeah, those are the two different frameworks that we can look at. Today. So you have to decide which one works will work better for you. Um, so just general tips on making a decision is, like we said, decisions, Powerful decisions are made with powerful information. So always reason logically with data, especially in business. Um, and the other one is, especially if it's something reversible and it doesn't have a lot of consequence, it doesn't have to be perfect to work. You can choose this decision, fail, and then try again next time. So the whole goal is to move fast because then you're learning faster. Um, and then also consider time factor and also simplify and minimize the decision. So this is this also goes back to prioritization. So um, in terms of prioritization, which decisions are most important to make? Some decisions are not really that impactful for you at the moment. So um, minimize the amount of decisions that you want to make. And then talk to mentors, people who've already been in the industry that you're in, people who've already gone through the path that you're thinking about and get their whole sense of story and understand exactly. They could give you tips to, and those tips could be like data that could help you make proper decisions. And the last one again, gather enough data that will help you reason a lot. Um, so with that, we can also look at how decision making is relevant in a workplace. And we have like eight scenarios here. So an example could be just choosing which tasks to prioritize. That's, those are decisions that you have to make, especially when you have multiple projects and upcoming deadlines. And then another, another way of other decision making scenario that you could get is if you have to choose um, certain platforms, so for example, between AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and all the other cloud platforms, which one is the best for your company, or you, especially you as data engineers. And also understand, so deciding how to handle a difficult client, and yeah, whether to accept a new offer or stay in your current position, decide how to react when a team member constantly misses deadlines. There are very many different scenarios that you have that you can face in a day to day. And yeah, so yeah, it's good to have a proper framework that could guide you make a proper decision. Um, yeah, that's that's all for today on the tutorial. It was very short and sweet, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Um, so yeah, for the exercise today, you are going to, yeah, you have, you're going to first understand the, or read more on the Jeff Bezos decision-making framework. 
and then you're going to have two scenarios that you've been given and then you have to number one state if it's a type one or two decision and then document your decision making process so this could look like writing a list of Sorry, apologies for that. My, my lights just went off. Um, so where where exactly could someone help me understand where I dropped off at? Was I at the challenge document already? If yes, thumbs up. Okay, thank you very much for your feedback. Yeah, so I was saying you have two scenarios. So if you join a, the first scenario is if you join a tech startup and that offers credit scoring platforms um, and you're in charge of choosing between the cloud platform AWS, GCP or Azure, which recommendation would you advise on? And you have reasons and I know you've worked with cloud platforms before. If not, this would be a good chance for you to go learn more about them. Uh, second scenario is if you ever find yourself in um, yeah, so we would like to see how you make your decisions. So document your decision making process and why exactly did you decide on doing this? Um, Yeah, that okay. Uh so with that I we can call it a session. Thank you so much guys for being here. I hope you will enjoy the session. Best to hear.